Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of Half Human Heroes, a fantasy anthology edited by Jeremy Fee. So uh, this is a booktube anthology, it has a bunch of booktubers in here, it's got a story for myself as well. Um, as always, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and uh, read you the blurb, then I'm going to check out my tabs, then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. What I will say is obviously I've not uh, reviewed my own story, because that would be weird, um, but I have checked out the others, and I'm very impressed by the quality of this thing, it's very good. Dane reads. All right, so from the introduction, uh, and this is the bit by, hang on, is this the introduction? This is the preface. So we have a foreword by Philip Chase, which is actually really interesting, talks about booktube and YouTube and all of that stuff. And then we get a preface by Jeremy Fee. And I thought this was really interesting. He says, um, when I was growing up, the first character I made for playing Dungeons and Dragons was a half-elf. I always imagined that while the human cultures call them half-elves, surely the elf populations refer to them as half-human instead. Which is probably true. So we're going to Dishonored in Death by Mason Aidy, one of the stronger stories. Um, we get some, I mean this is the opening paragraph which I think is very deep. The woman knew two truths. Most people danced around the first truth because it made them uncomfortable. Bad things happened to good people. Life was unfair. It was filled with brutality and most of the time it was too short. Which just reminds me of that quote. Doesn't life, li doesn't life seem nasty, brutish and short? Which I attribute to Tom Waits but he stole it from somewhere else. Um, and then on page four of this we have a reference to a syzygy. The floodgates open when the blood moon, aligned in both peregrine syzygy, came into view. And funnily enough, at the time that I was reading this, I was editing my review of Three Roads and Other Stories by Emma Timpany that I read like a year ago and filmed a review of then and never got round to uh, editing. And in that I said it uses the word syzygy on the first page, that's a strong um, introduction. And uh, again, having it on the fourth page here, very nice. Um, that's about all I tabbed out of that. I didn't actually tab as much as I was expecting to, to be honest. Um, it was one of those where I was just enjoying the book. I didn't want it to feel like homework, you know. Um, but we have Goatman's Bridge by P.M. Brown, which I found interesting to read anyway, because um, there's a BuzzFeed Unsolved episode about the Goatman. Uh, Goatman's Bridge in, in Denton, Texas. Uh, the best ever death metal band out of Denton. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, there's a publisher's note here, which I just think is really cool. Um, I knew a little something of this, but it's cool to um, understand exactly what's happening. So Rogue Words LLC is Jeremy's company. And we have publisher's note. Rogue Words LLC is honoured to have won the bidding contest to purchase the rights to publish the writings of P.M. Brown, 1950 to 2022. When the author recently passed away, his son went through his personal items and found the following story in torn pieces at the back of a wooden box that featured a carving of leaves and an artistic portrayal of a satyr playing a pipe. His son used tape to put the scraps together, forming the following manuscript, which we have allowed Jeremy Fee to edit and revise for this collection. Based on previously conducted interviews with references matching the title of this story, we believe it is the previously considered lost story P.M. Brown submitted to get accepted to work on his Master of Fine Arts degree in creative writing. What we find most intriguing about the story is the narrator, Marlon Timothy, is also the protagonist from P.M. Brown's Lake Modesty Murderer series. We know these stories to be a somewhat autobiographical retelling of the author's life. As with those other stories, we find ourselves asking academic questions about the line between the real and the surreal, the nexus point for magical realism, and the inclusion of fantastical elements in a life that was anything but mundane. In honour of the memory of P.M. Brown, we hope you will enjoy this restored version of his early work. So that's very cool. Somebody in this character has got a hound dog called Elvis, which I thought was brilliant. Uh, then we have The Band Gets Together by myself, Dane Cobain. I'm not going to tell you too much about that. Read it if you want to read that. And then we have Home of the Gnome by Jeremy Fee himself. Great quote in this. No matter how long I live, how many old books I read, I may never understand the human need for war and destruction. Same, mate, 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 pal, mate. Another great line. One of the most important lessons someone could learn in life was that it was wrong for good people to do nothing while evil triumphed over the good or innocent. So moving on to Abandoned Hope by Jessica Haas. Didn't have anything out for that, so then we have uh, Amaranthine Amphitheatre by Liam, Key, Liam Q. D. Hall. And this just has um, the sentence, they attack stochastically using hands and teeth, which I enjoy. I know from Red Dwarf, actually, that stochastic means like based on chance. Then we have Lies of the Sunstone and the Hybrid Prince by S.D. Houston. Uh, we get a reference here to um, iron and how it was traditionally used to ward off um, fairies and elves and stuff so a human couldn't touch it but the fae can't and i just like that that's like a harking back to uh, to old magic uh, we get reference to sun gods as well and i've been playing a lot of bloons tower defense on my phone and there's a tower in that called the sun god so i enjoyed that okay red eyes by Kupo Josef kark nothing tabbed out there so then we have more or less human by margaret pinyard 
It's actually my last tab of the collection here. And we get the line, lips that were thick below a strange thin nose, almost like Voldemort's. And I like that Voldemort is now so iconic that you can just use, you can just say like Voldemort's. Uh, and then we have the Defense of Burgon by David Wiley. I kept reading that as de uh, the Defense of Baragon. And then all of this towards the end, this is, uh, we've got all the author bios. Um, I like how accomplished I look with my big list of books that I've written. Um, we have some excerpts, we have some of uh, Jeremy's poetry, we have a preview of Monster Huntress chapters 1 to 3, and then we have like some of the covers of some of the books by the contributors as well, so that was pretty good. Um, but yes, all in all, Half Human Heroes, a fantasy anthology by Jeremy Fee, did enjoy. I do think a lot of that bonus stuff at the end was put in because otherwise it would have been a bit too small. I mean, I think without the uh, contributor bios and the bonuses, it comes to about 146 pages, was it? A bit less than that about 136 pages so it probably wouldn't have been big enough on its own without those I would have liked to have seen a couple more stories included um, but I enjoyed getting my little dose of fantasy a uh, wide range of different stuff here as I said they're all high quality there wasn't anything in there that like I thought was substandard compared to the rest nicely edited by uh, Jeremy as well he did I think he only did, did like copy edits and that was all it really needed uh, so yeah overall I gave Half Human Heroes a fantasy anthology a four out of five so there we have it, that's what I made of Half Human Heroes. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book, and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.